he told her that I was dead and that she needed to stay in bed and wait until the police come. He then went and phoned the police and told them that he had killed me and that he needed to be taken away. This is a story about how a survivor of domestic violence confronted her abuser and moved on with her life through a process called restorative justice. I've been finding out what restorative justice actually is, how it's being used in the UK, and why many victims are not being offered it. I think restorative justice is obviously very appropriate for a whole range of other crimes. But in those crimes, most of the time, there's not that relationship and the ongoing potential for abuse that you have with domestic abuse. Restorative justice is essentially about communication after a crime has taken place. Um, it provides an opportunity for those harmed by the offence to put across their views about what happened, the impact that it had on them, the uh, potentially ask questions to the one person that can really only answer those questions. You've been a victim of a crime. It could be a burglary or an assault on a night out. Your perpetrator gets convicted and sent to prison. But why did they do it? And are they really sorry, or will they come for you again one day? Restorative justice is a way of bringing perpetrator together with the victim to get answers and perhaps some closure. It's up to each police and crime commissioning area to decide how much to spend on the service. And for domestic violence victims, it's particularly controversial. Um, you know, if, for example, I think most people think, oh, when you leave an abuser, the abuse must stop. Well, actually, that's when your risk increases. Um, and so, and, and perpetrators of abuse will do absolutely anything to try to continue that connection. Can you tell me exactly what happened to you? Um, I was a victim of domestic violence. I had uh, fallen in love with a man that I'd seen over a packed high street. It was love at first sight for us. Um, but the relationship was toxic on all levels. We both um, had drink problems. To this day, I've still got no recollection of the actual um, attack itself. And the only witness was my daughter, and she was eight years old at the time. Um, she had heard some commotion in the bedroom and then had asked my ex-partner um, what was going on, why I couldn't come in and tuck her in good night. She knew that something was, was seriously wrong. And he told her that I was dead and that she needed to stay in bed and wait until the police come. He then went and phoned the police and told them that he had killed me and that he needed to be taken away. Um, it wasn't until a porter was taking me for some more x-rays or scans that he had wheeled me in the wheelchair frontwards into the lift. And then he said, oh, I was meant to bring you in backwards. So I'd seen myself on the mirrored bit that goes round um, in the lift. And honestly, I just looked like the elephant man. I was barely recognised myself. Um, and he had beaten me with a large pepper grinder until he thought I was dead. So my injuries were quite significant. And so began a long and lonely process of going to court and getting him convicted. But Lucy's experience left her with far more questions than answers. That in those interim years, so you basically, he'd been convicted and you were left feeling, what's going to happen to me? He's going to come out? Am I going to see him again? Like, yeah. What, how did that feel for you? Um, I had to move home um, because it was deemed too unsafe to me to stay where I was. My daughter um, would have become a child at risk. So we had to move and I become completely isolated from everyone I knew, everything that was safe. And my mental health just spiraled and spiraled. Um, further and further out of control until I was just at home on my own. Um, a wreck, really. I barely go out of my bedroom. Um, and then I, I fought back. I managed to get myself clean and sober. And um, I thought, I, I need to be able to do something. I need to be able to speak to him or write a letter or, or do something to be able to put the past behind me and to be able to move on. Um, I contacted my victim liaison officer. He said, how do you fancy meeting him face to face? Um, 
And I said, yeah, is that even possible? Not knowing how difficult it is for um, victims of domestic violence to get access to restorative justice. The day of the conference, I was nervous. I was nervous about how the whole thing would go. Um, when we got into the prison, as soon as I walked into the room and I saw him sitting there, it reminded me that he is just one person, just one normal, average person, not this all-consuming um, dark cloud that had shadowed my life for so long. Um, in that moment, I got my perspective back. Um, we had our chat um, when I left the conference. I, it sounds cheesy, I felt like I had been reborn, that I'd got my power back, that it was honestly the first day of the rest of my life. I don't know where I would be had I not had that conference, if I'd not had that face-to-face -face meeting because he has been released from prison. But I have no anxiety about that. What are your thoughts on how restorative justice could have a role in domestic violence cases? Well, I suppose my overarching view is that with a lot of caution. Um, you know, I'm aware that you've spoken with a couple of victims and survivors who really feel this has worked for them, and I, I would never wish to deny that experience. I think that's really important. I think we have to be really careful about knowing what works exactly what that means, you know, what kind of training, um, assessments in place. It's just simply not the kind of thing that we could do without that, without a great deal of caution, planning, um, and more research, you know, to know exactly who's doing this, what are they actually doing, um, how are they following up. There is some evidence to show restorative justice can have a positive impact, but it's limited. A 2021 report by restorative services provider Remedy found that 94% of victims of all crime types felt their sense of safety increased after going through the process. A 2013 study from the US showed half the number of convicted domestic violence offenders were reconvicted if they'd been through the restorative justice process. A 2007 report commissioned by the UK government found that restorative justice has an 85% satisfaction rate for victims. But with so little evidence focusing on the impact on domestic violence cases, some charities have major concerns. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the needs and the experiences of survivors. But equally, I think it is extremely difficult, even for the most skilled and trained professional, to really understand the motivation for the perpetrator to go into the process and to be able to keep the survivor safe during the process as well. Natasha's former partner is in prison, convicted of raping and sexually assaulting her. She is one of the vast majority of women who experience the justice system in the conventional way, with no further contact with their perpetrator. For me, I don't need closure by talking to my abuser. Again, the things that he did, I don't need answers for. They're, they're on him, they're not on me. And I think it's, it's very much, uh, I think excuses can be made. Abusers frequently lie, that's what they do. They lie and they manipulate. And I think giving them the opportunity to not only manipulate their victims more and put them back at risk, but I think there's also that huge risk of professionals being manipulated by that and their judgment being skewed by false promises. Good girl. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Good girl. The criminal justice system tends to be very bulky, um, very, um, you know, one size fits all when one size clearly doesn't fit all and that's what we're struggling with people saying on one hand it's it's working for some um, but the idea of I guess my worry is taking that without a huge amount of evidence and then offering that in a much larger scale would you know we would really want to pull back and and do that with a lot more caution more resource you know we have a very under resourced criminal justice system I wanted to get an idea of how many of these cases were actually progressing, seeing as there were so many concerns. 
I asked all of the police and crime commissioning areas how many domestic violence cases had gone through the restorative justice process in the past year. Of those who responded, while none said they excluded domestic abuse cases, the numbers were very low. In West Mercia, which covers Shropshire, Telford and Reckon and Worcestershire, they had never used restorative justice for a case of domestic abuse. The lack of proper guidelines and research seems to be a major roadblock here. I asked practitioner Nicola how her work was affected. There are challenges for us as an organisation in progressing restorative justice in domestic abuse cases because there's not a consistency in each area that we work in terms of the partner agency acceptance that this could be explored and certainly from a Ministry of Justice perspective there are no national guidance around the delivery of restorative justice in domestic abuse cases. We've developed our own framework which is very robust and it's been um, tested and trialled and, and, and certainly had input from our partner agencies where we've developed it but it would be really um, beneficial for us if there was that national guidance in place from the Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice told me it's taking steps to ensure every victim, no matter the crime involved, is offered the opportunity to take part in restorative justice, although it won't be appropriate for all cases. It said funding for victim and witness support services will reach £192 million a year by 2024 some of which will go to police and crime commissioners to commission local support services for victims of all crime types. We also approached the National Police Chiefs Council and the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners. They say they have begun working on developing a national strategy on restorative justice, including how that will apply to domestic violence cases. I guess when I think about the criminal justice system and domestic abuse and I think there's so many more fundamental things that we have to prioritize, just getting things right end to end, making sure that victims are um, getting the justice that they deserve and need. Um, and I think restorative justice is kind of on on the map for that, but I do I, it wouldn't be my first priority in terms of the kind of root and branch you know, reform we need of the criminal justice system for issues like domestic abuse. It's clear that wider reform is needed in the justice system. Without significant investment and research, restorative justice for domestic violence victims will continue to be difficult to access. But for Lucy, I'm left wondering where she would be without it. As much as I'd like to think that I could keep it together, sitting in your bedroom terrified of your own shadow, not answering the door, having the TV on mute. Um, that's about as low as it can get. Um, and restorative justice has given me the freedom to now be here. I never went to the conference expecting to be able to forgive him. It was not on my radar. I didn't really care about his feelings or how he felt, but it happened and it just happened naturally. Naturally, I did forgive him. And I needed to do that to be able to let the anger and the fear and and the panic that he had caused me, I needed to be able to let that go. Yes, I've forgiven him for what he's done. Um, I just hope he doesn't do it to anybody else.